hi dear students hope all are doing great me also doing fine so finally the final year examination got over and they are in a stage of relief and but for the first year and second years and those who skip the third year examination they have another examinations at hand so probably by december you have to appear for the examination barely two to three months are left for that so making you in a better position to face that examination we are planning to introduce uh, videos for bcom bba bts mcom and mba management papers as a part of that today the first video for bts that is paper ts7 human resource development today we are going to discuss the first unit of ts7 that is human resource planning before getting into the video a small request if you find the contents of these videos are useful please like share and subscribe the channel okay if you are sharing the videos with your friends it will reach to more of them and it will be helpful for our igno community okay so without further ado let's get started so today we are going to discuss human resource planning objectives of human resource planning need for human resource planning and need for human resource planning in hospitality industry then qualitative dimension of human resource planning micro and macro level scenario of human resource planning in hospitality industry okay so human resource planning its uh, relevance need we are focusing more on the hospitality industry because it is tourism related paper right the first topic is human resource planning okay let's look into what do you mean by human resource that is the manpower we can otherwise call the human resource planning as manpower planning right human resource planning can be defined as a strategy for the acquisition utilization improvement and preservation of human resource of an enterprise so in short we say that whenever we are saying the human resource planning it includes acquisition that is recruitment then you are recruiting the employees then you are making them work for your company and then you are evaluating their performance if their performance are not up to the mark what will you do you will provide them training as well as development program and then uh, keep them a part of our organization for a pretty long time so that all these things are included in human resource planning so for it's a strategy for the acquisition that is recruitment utilization that managing then improvement that is training and development and preservation and that is uh, keeping the morale of the employees of an organization so the strategy for all these steps is known as human resource planning right so there are several definition for that so according to coleman human resource planning it's a process of determining manpower requirement and the means for meeting those requirements in order to carry out the integrated plan of an organization so every organization should know how much manpower are required and they should know which are the ways through which they can acquire those skills and how they have to carry out the recruitment process and how they have to maintain their employees so all these things are coming under human resource planning then according to wickstrom human resource planning consists of a series of activities okay so first one is forecasting forecasting means future manpower requirement forecasting means so for example your organization is planning to uh, start a new um, new show, new uh, production unit okay so uh, you have to forecast how much manpower you have needed for that right then inventory that is present manpower resource how much employees are currently with you and uh, what is their qualification uh, is these employees are enough for the new unit so all these Uh, calculations and all these analysis is coming under inventory the next one is anticipating manpower problem so anticipating manpower problems implies that by projecting the present resources into the future and comparing them with the forecast for example you have 100 employees with you now but for the new unit you need you are in need of 150 employees so 50 employees more needed okay so among the 100 employees of current currently present one there is a probability that some have the interest to quit the organization they can exit or some uh, some probability of 
losing some employees so th all these things have to be anticipated and then only they have to uh, forecast the manpower requirement then planning then once the anticipated manpower planning manpower is also uh, there then they have to go for the planning that is necessary program for the recruitment selection training etc for the future manpower requirement okay so forecasting inventing anticipating manpower problems and then planning so these are the four series of activities included in HRP according to Wickstorm. So the next important topic is objective of human resource planning. The first objective is to recruit and retain the human resource of required quantity and quality that is the firm has to uh, recruit the necessary uh, human resource along with that they have to make sure that they will retain these employees with them right second one is to foresee the employee turnover employee turnover means the employees are leaving the organization so the employee turnover is not a good sign of organizational growth okay so the organization has to formulate the strategies so that it can minimize the employee turnover and uh, they have to uh, take steps for filling these vacancies too. Then to meet the needs of the programs of expansion and diversification. Expansion of business means they are uh, for example if a firm has uh, business only in a particular area they are expanding into a uh, district or a state so that is expansion. Diversification means they are currently running uh, an educational sec educational based business okay but now they are planning for a manufacturing based business so that is diversification then to improve the standard skills uh, knowledge ability discipline etc that is the employees of an organization should be able to cope with the challenges of the external environment so the it's a duty of the organization to make sure that their employees are capable enough to meet the challenges okay so to assess the surplus or shortage of human resource and take if there is a surplus the firm has to uh, redeploy them and if there is a shortage the uh, firm has to recruit more workforce then imbalance majority of the organizations are facing these problem they have uh, human resource with them but they are not uh, the exact one that is the for a particular for example if you uh, you have lots of teachers working in a educational firm okay but for handling the um, postgraduate courses or for postgraduate classes particular criteria should be fulfilled that is particular expertise should be there right so you have teachers with us but these teachers are not enough to uh, handle these classes so that means it's an imbalance right so the firm has to make sure that they have to minimize that imbalance then to make the best use of its resources how much human resource you have is a matter along with that how you are utilizing that resource that is another important thing so with less resource also if you are if you are able to manage properly then it is a big success right so that is to make the best use of its human resource then to estimate the cost of human resource so these are some of the objective of human resource planning so these all things are possible only through the HRP next important point is human resource planning in hospitality industry okay so before getting into that what do you mean by hospitality industry so hospitality industry is a service industry it comprises of mainly four sectors four sectors are there in the hospitality industry so which are the four sectors it's a service sector first So the first sector is food and beverages. So that is for hotels and all where we used to go for dining and all. So that is food and beverages. So that is a part of hospitality sector. Second sector is travel and tourism. If you want to visit a place as a part of pleasure activity, you have to uh, board a vehicle, right? So that is also a part of hospitality industry, right? The services of moving uh, people from one place to another, they have to 
use either train or bus or cab ships like that so all are a part of this travel industry so it's a part of this tourism industry okay so that is it is encourage the people travel and tourism industry encourages the people to travel so when they people are traveling they either for their business or the leisure they spent money on hospitality right next is lodging lodging means the accommodation that is accommodation for a period or a place to sleep for one or more nights that fancy hotels they are also a part of uh, hospitality sector then the last one is recreation recreation means it's an activity the people we used to do either for the relaxation for rest and for enjoyment so that is the main aim of this recreation is to refresh our body as well as mind so that is also a part of the hospitality industry so it's a service industry that is consists of mainly four sectors food and beverages travel and tourism lodging and recreation right then so there employee generation tourism sector is one of the most important employment generator right and many of the countries are focusing more on the tourism sector so that they can employ their younger citizens there right so second one is a tool for economic development so when we travel from one country to another country and we are spending we have disposable income we, we are spending it for either for food either for traveling either for lodging either for recreation so anyway we are spending the money so the economy is getting more income and so that's lead to the development of an economy so it's a tool for economic development and hospitality as a product now we know that when we consider this travel and tourism or lodging or recreation facilities all these hospitality sectors are providing us a product so it's a product then demand for specialized skills we all know that when we want to uh, have a dine out so we will we have different choices okay so we we are in demand of Uh, specialized services next is highly competitive market we know that so budget friendly one then uh, expensive one so different categories are there so different services better five star three star four star all these facilities are there in the hospitality sector okay so it's a highly competitive market so th- so for meeting all these things hrp is needed so human resources so they are the backbone for the hospitality sector like any other sectors particularly in hospitality sector we are more interacting it's a service sector and we are more interacting with the employees and through the only the name and pride of that organization is delivering right so next is type of human resource planning okay then first one is strategic human resource planning tactical human resource planning short term manpower planning and long term manpower planning strategic human resource planning means it's about changing industry policies to prepare it for the future keeping pace with the changes next is tactical means it's an operational planning that is for the day to day operations right for the day to day operations uh, it's not as operational planning which address the issue associated with the growth or no operation of the organization within a specific problem that might adversely for example the current pandemic how to handle the current pandemic so Uh, in the early 2020 the majority of the organization focused on tactical human resource planning but when we reach 2021 we know that we have to focus on strategic human resource planning right next short term human resource planning that is it's a short, it's a uh, the plan only for 0 to 2 years so that is coming under short term manpower planning and long term manpower planning means we are predicting or we are foreseeing the human resource needs for a period of 15 to 20 years okay so that is long term manpower plan so these are the four types of human resource so the steps involved in long term manpower planning there is first is projecting the manpower need the organization has to estimate the manpower needs and next step is inventory and analysis we then they have to take an account of the current manpower their qualification is it enough to uh, meet the ch- in a meet the challenges in future then if not the company will go for the recruitment and selection process and after that they will provide their employees both the currently required recruited one and the existing one with development and training 
facilities uh, so that they can they will be able to meet the challenges of the future right so these are the four steps involved now we are moving to the education planning approach there are three approaches for the educational planning first is social demand approach whenever you are planning for a particular course we will first think about the what is the opinion of the society about that course is it good and what is the societal value for that course when we are joining a particular course if it will if it provide me a social status then i will go for that these type of prejudices are there right so that is demand is we cannot calculate exactly what is the uh, de uh, individuals demand on on a particular course okay so this approach is applicable to the plan of human resource of the society in general in relation to solve a social program in the previous decades people have a uh, tendency towards the teaching jobs after that uh, towards the it sector so it sector was in a boom so all are choosing the uh, engineering program particularly it based engineering program okay after that uh, the hospitality sector was in boom then they focused the society is more focusing on that type of courses that can easily create um, job opportunities and the employment chances are high so they choose that okay so it will change depending upon the uh, situations prevailing in the economies and around the globe then rate of return approach when we are spending this much money we will always consider how much i will get back or rate of return okay it's a one of the important factor while we are making an investment option right so when we are making an investment in an education sector also we will consider the same if i am investing a hefty amount i have to get thrice or twice of that amount in return right so that is rate of return approach then manpower requirement approach uh, so there's a definite link between the education and economic growth if an economy consists of Uh, talented and um, talented uh, human resource then the growth will be high particularly in gccs pre, uh, currently their uh, citizens are getting educated and uh, they have uh, while considering the previous decade they have uh, some sort of human uh, human resources from their own uh, citizens okay previously they used to a point majority of asians particularly from the uh, uh, india pakistan like that for their for meeting their human resource need okay so the manpower requirement is not up to the mark that can reduce the growth of an economy so these are the uh, three main education planning approaches social demand rate of return and manpower requirement next is the dimensions of human resource planning so first is education and training education and training are the most important dimension that's affect the quality of human resource in terms of knowledge as well as skill so when we are providing the individuals with this education and training it will provide the employees with provide the individuals with employment and a good social life and that can in turn uh, lead to the growth of an economy and a society as well as a country okay then depending on the methods of imparting knowledge and skills education and training can be classified into formal education and informal education formal education means that is education imparted through colleges and school that is formal education informal means on the job training or the through home schoolings all these are coming under informal education and training then health and nutrition so that is another dimension health and nutrition status constitutes one of the most important indicator of a quality of human resource if when we are considering a human asset of a nation first we will consider how much educated that society is okay second one is what is the health status or uh, they are uh, health and health wise fit and fine so these are the two main dimensions of uh, assessing a human resource of a country okay so the education and training that can be imparted through formal ways and informal ways health and nutrition there are three determinants for the health status first is purchasing power of people then public sanitation climate and availability of medical facilities people's knowledge on understanding of health hygiene and nutrition so the purchasing power of the people is high that means uh, they have enough income and they are aware of the uh, consumer 
rights and consumer duties responsibilities and they um, that is the first step second one public sanitation climate and availability of medical facilities so that is another indicator of health status then people's knowledge and understanding of the health hygiene and nutrition people are, have a good sense and knowledge of health hygiene and nutrition so definitely that human assets are in a better standard of living okay so these are the two main dimensions of human resource planning that is education and training and health and nutrition so every country is focusing on uh, these two factors that is they have to make their citizens educated and prepare them to meet the challenges of the future then provide them with effective nutrition and so that they can be a healthier generation the last topic is micro and macro level scenario of human resource planning in hospitality industry micro level planning means it revolves around the manpower needs and requirement of an organization we already discussed mainly four steps are there first they will analyze their need then they will analyze the current manpower then if there is a shortage they will go for recruitment and selection and then the development and training program of the employees then the next is macro level planning macro level means it's a larger scale that is uh, we are Uh, like microeconomics and macroeconomics microeconomics means for a smaller sector macro means for a country or for the, when we are uh, talking about the world economy it's a macroeconomics right so macro level planning means when a country is or an industry how to for example the automobile industry so they they are planning to uh, have a growth of uh, five percentage Uh, after 10 years okay so how they will uh, calculate their manpower requirement so the first step is they will analyze the or take or taken into account the current manpower of that industry uh, and their merits and demerits skilled and unskilled all these things they will taken into account okay then they will make a projection so for meeting the demand after 10 years how much resources they are in they will be in need okay so that is macro level planning so these are the two levels of human resource planning in hospitality industry or any other industry right so send off this video and we will come with the other topics in the upcoming videos okay so just go through it if you like it please uh, provide the comments in the comment section and if you have any suggestions to please provide it So let's find up with the court of Napoleon that is victory belongs to the most persevering one so perseverance is one of the important element of success so we have to achieve our success only through the perseverance right so if you like the content of our video please share the video with your friends and subscribe the channel so we'll come with the next video within one or two days to so till then take care stay safe stay healthy thank you